It's 12 o'clock, and it's raining time in Jacksonville, Florida. It's pouring out there, and I just walked in the house. What did I just walk in the house with? An unboxing. A long, skinny unboxing. As your ugly stick rod YouTube ambassador, like I always said, I didn't make that up. Somebody else did and called me that. Because <laughs> I've got so many successful videos on YouTube about ugly sticks. But, here's the big misconception, folks, is the fact that you are looking at a rod and you want me to make a video and discuss it and review it. I just went through a little foray with a commenter uh, just this week or last week where he picked some rod that he likes and saw at Walmart or something and wants me to review it or whatever. That's not how it happens, just so you know, folks. I'm in the fishing business. I'm a fishing guide in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Northeast Florida. I use and do videos on the rods I use, plain and simple. I'm not doing a nine-foot mooching rod for some dude up in Washington State, okay? So, my old ugly stick hat, I got a brand new one. My old one's been retired. It's right here. And it needed to be retired because a friend of mine and I were sitting on my back porch drinking some kind of fancy Mexican beer he brought over. And he asked me, hey... That ugly stick hat you got, is that one of them oil skins or oiled canvas? I took it off and I said, no, it's oiled with sweat, brother. It's oiled with sweat. So I guess that's a here's your sign. Change your hat, Dave. So I got plenty of them. So for this occasion, I put on a brand new one. So let's get on with the... Unboxing here. This is how you get them when you get them straight from pure fishing. There should be ooh, big boomers coming. Hope the power stays on so we got some light in here. It's not all that light in here, but when you get them straight from pure fishing through uglystick.com, this is how they'll come. They should be four of them in here, and I'm going to tell you why and how and all that of why there is four because you know I got plenty of ugly sticks actually in all reality these rods could have come USPS boy oh here we go Woo! that was a big boomer these could have come USPS and that would have made me a little aggravated for the sheer fact I don't like anything coming USPS. So let's see if these are even the correct ones. Before I go getting all nutty here, oh, they're the right ones. And what are they? Oop, there ain't nothing like brand new ugly sticks. These, you will never find these in most tackle shops. What I've come to find out is nobody wants to really stock that many ugly sticks for the sheer fact there's not a huge markup on these. But what these are are brand new seven foot ugly stick stripers 
brand spanking new, and good God, do I love these rods. And like I've said many times before, this is the reason I like them. That is the reason I love these rods. Because they have such a parabolic, beautiful bend. The ugly tough guides uh, on this end, rubber gimbal. Of course, all mine will be casting. You can go buy egg beater rods if you want. I don't use spinners because these are going to be brand new float rig rods. Okay? Stereotypically, I always use seven foot six float rig rods. And I will show you this again in a couple minutes. And the reason being, God, I love that bend. The reason being is they're longer for pitching out your float. Well, believe it or not, they're a little unwieldy. Is that a word? Un unwieldy? They're a little unwieldy. And I, now that I have the top on the boat, I have to poke them through. I've got these little hole things in my new mega top on the Jetty Wolf. And I have to poke them through and all that. So I figured I'm going to try, because my personal float rig rod is a 7-footer. Yeah, I, I don't use a 7-footer with a Daiwa Ryoga on it. So I really like it, and I'm going to try since during the summer months, I don't float rig as much as I do in the wintertime. And you can read all about that and why on my blog. I did a great article, if I do say so myself. And I also received two comments from two other people of how it was such an edgy article. And I will put the link below in the video description where it says show more. And you need to go to my blog. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you need to go to my blog because I have to tell you that's where the meat potatoes are. I don't do, you know, just posting up photographs on YouTube. I do videos on YouTube. So when I can't do video for whatever reason, I'm sitting on a secret spot, I just take pictures. I can't really be running the camera and things like that too. So a lot of information gets put on my blog about local fishing that's never going to hit the airwaves of YouTube, all right? This is how they come. If you're not familiar with the Ugly Stick Striper, it's light enough action-wise. I can throw lures. I can plug with them. Um, I can jig. Uh, I can sling, do the Cajun sling. I can sling a fish right over the side of my boat. These are durable, lightweight. Now, but you got to remember, this is still part of the old school lineup. These aren't like the GX2s. These aren't like the Elites or any of those other, uh, in those, and even those cork handled rods. This is still the rod from yesteryear. The black rod with the orange, red, and uh, weaving on it. It's just upgraded and it's white. I hope people understand that they make the striper and the catfish and I believe a little tiny rod called the crappy, which is like a little ultralight, um, in their species specific line of rods all right so these got the ugly tough guides on them uh, just back in the old day you know the, the
the EVA foam. I've got a complete video. Again, I'll put in the video description. I'll put tons of videos. I'll put tons of information in the video description. But uh, these are just the old school rods, white, upgraded with Ugly Tough Guides and the gimp rubber gimbal. So it locks into a rod holder. So let me show you. I'll show you my seven foot sixers. Now let's look at this. It's kind of dark under here. Let me see if I can turn on a light and if it makes any difference. Let me use the end of the rod here to stretch on out and see if I can turn this light on. There. That's what an ugly stick is good for. Let there be light. Alright. So, let's see. The minute you go up to the seven foot six ugly stick striper, down here at the butt, if you can see this, this one here is much thicker at the base. All the way down, it's much thicker at the base than the seven footer, which is over here. This is a seven foot six, this is a seven foot. When you get down towards the end of the rod, towards the reel, the, uh, the blank of the ugly stick stripers gets thicker and stiffer. I would say that this rod gives you the ultimate and mega parabolic bend, if that's what you're looking for. And this one, is actually a bit better for handling really large fish, the seven foot six. They're identical in every way other than that and the length. So um, I noticed these little characteristics and I'm passing them on to you. It depends what you'd want. I know this rod here can handle 25, 30 pound redfish on a float rig Here's the floats, drifting the floats out behind the boat. And this seven footer, you're going on an amusement park ride when you hook a fish that big on this rod. So these can handle bigger fish. These can handle them too, but there's always that button there. How experienced are you? How impatient are you? Oh, by the way, before we head on into the wolf den. This rack used to be in my rod room. Well, this is another tips and tricks. Build yourself a long rack that just lays low. Put it out next to your boat. So when you're loading your boat and unloading your boat, you can move it around and there is going to be no damage to your rods from sliding down your boat, falling on the ground, you'll be able to load all your rods right next to your boat. It's portable, move it around, and you get up in the boat, you pull the rods out. You come back from fishing, you walk over, you wash your rods, out, wash your rods off, and you stand up here letting them dry until they're ready to go back inside. If you're one of those people who just open the garage door, carry everything in there, and throw all your rods in the corner, you can disregard that. Disregard anything about taking care of your tackle. Alrighty, let's go inside. Alright, well, in all the videos I've ever done, uh... I don't know how much more I can say about these rods, except for the fact that I've been fishing them pretty much since they came out, these Ugly Stick Striper and Catfish rods. I've kind of gotten a little bit away from the Catfish rods for the sheer fact that I kind of fell in love with the Tiger Light Jigging Rod, six foot three, heavy action. <coughs> They're so light. Uh, they're a lot stiffer, they're shorter, and they make a fantastic boat rod 
for bottom fishing in and around here because we have got huge amounts of current and um, you know I I'm, when I'm bottom fishing I mean like our minimum weight that we're using is four ounces okay most of the time it's it's four ounces I mean and you sit in 30 25 feet of water or whatever so um, as far as these are concerned hold on let me grab my glasses uh, I'm just going to read some of the stats on the ugly stick striper it's a seven foot this is the seven foot medium light six to twenty pound line just look it up on uglystick.com these can handle four ounces we commonly fish four ounces on here what did it say again okay if I I don't know if I said it or not quarter to three quarter ounces what? What? Are we are you kidding? Ha! My most minimum weight as far as a sinker that I probably would ever put on here is an ounce. Quarter to three quarter? Let me tell you, that is total it's right, probably, but it's totally unballpark. You could put four ounces on these rods. And fish them all day catch giant fish it doesn't it's no big you can cast four ounces I cast four ounces all the time I've thrown really big heavy two to four ounce uh, giant plugs with these no problem so let's set the rod aside if you got any questions just leave them in the comments section below I'm sure you will and don't forget I don't understand this I got like 6,000, and I know this doesn't mean anything. I got like 6,000 subscribers. But a video will sit out there for two weeks and still only have like 400 views. What happened to the other 5,600 subscribers? I know from what I gather, I've been doing YouTube for a long time now, that doesn't matter. Subscribers does not matter. But I'm going to try to give you as much information as possible. So I'm going to put a ton of links in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for commenting, and keep an eye on your float, because when it goes down, you get a bite.